par. But let's begin with our chief national security correspondent, Jim Shudo. He's in Manila right now in the Philippines. He has an exclusive report on that confrontation between the Chinese military and a U.S. spy plane. Jim, tell our viewers what happened. Well, if it comes down to fundamental, potentially dangerous disagreement, though these islands are brand new, manufactured, in fact, China views them as sovereign territory. The U.S. views them as international waters, international airspace, and it demonstrates that, as it did today, by flying over them, sailing nearby them, Chinese protests getting louder, U.S. moves getting bolder, the tension there escalating. For a military aircraft, this is Chinese. High above the South China Sea, the radio crackles with a stern warning. Go, go! The source of dispute appears on the horizon seemingly out of nowhere. Islands man-made by China, hundreds of miles from its coastline. So when's the last time you went up? CNN got exclusive access to classified U.S. surveillance flights over the islands. Maybe not. Check. The first time journalists have been allowed on an operational mission by the state-of-the-art P-8A Poseidon. America's most advanced surveillance and sub-hunting aircraft. So we've just arrived on station now above the three islands that are the targets of today's mission. It's these three islands that have been the focus of China's building in the South China Sea over recent years. China's alarming creation of entirely new territory in the South China Sea is one part of a broader military push that some fear is to challenge U.S. dominance in the region, sailing its first aircraft carrier equipping its nuclear missiles with multiple warheads, developing missiles to destroy U.S. aircraft carriers, and now building military bases far from its shores. For the U.S., the islands are a step too far, and this flight is part of a new and bold American military response that may soon include sailing U.S. warships close by as well. In just two years, China has expanded these islands by 2,000 acres, the equivalent of 1,500 football fields and counting an engineering marvel in waters as deep as 300 feet. You're a military man. You look at this. Is there any doubt that that is a future military installation? It appears to be a buildup of military infrastructure. And not to mention, we were just challenged uh, probably 30 minutes ago. And the challenge came from the uh, Chinese Navy. And I'm, I'm highly confident it came from a shore uh, on this facility here. Yeah. What used to be the Fiery Cross Reef now has early warning radar, an airport tower, and a runway long enough to handle every aircraft in the Chinese military. Some are calling it China's unsinkable aircraft carrier. These videos of the islands, taken from the P-8's advanced surveillance cameras, never before declassified. In a sign of just how valuable China views them, the new islands are already well protected. There's obviously a lot of surface traffic down there. Um... Chinese warships and Chinese Coast Guard ships. We heard the proof. The Chinese Navy ordering the P-8 out of the airspace not once, not twice, but eight times on this mission. Uh, this is the Chinese Navy. This is the Chinese Navy. Please go away quickly. And like the surveillance videos, the audio of these warnings never before shared with the public. You heard over the intercom, Chinese Navy. This is the Chinese Navy. And what was interesting is that there were also civilian aircraft. There was a Delta flight on that same frequency that when it heard that challenge, it piped into the frequency to say, what's going on? Uh, the Chinese Navy then reassuring them, but as the flight crew tells me, that can be a very nerve-wracking experience for civilian aircraft in the area. And the more China builds, we're told, the more frequently and aggressively it warns away U.S. aircraft. This is a dredger actually pumping sand uh, from under the water uh, on top of an area they're trying to build up uh, land. And we see this every day. So I, don't, I think they work weekends when they're doing this. 24-7. Uh, it, it happens. Uh, we see it all the time. Looking at these islands, you see the landing strips. You see military barracks. You see roads being built, trucks driving on those roads, and squadrons of dredgers and cargo ships adding to them every day. I have to say, Wolf, as you see them, they look like very permanent installations. It's difficult to see how, even with increased U.S. military traffic in the area, how China backs down. Jim, why the increased concern about all of this right now? Because I know there is intense concern at the highest levels of the United States government. 
It's two things, Wolf. One, it is pace. Over the span of just two years, China has expanded the area of these islands from five acres to 2,000 acres, 400 times, and it's rising every day. We saw that today, but it is also this. It is the militarization of them, putting in landing craft that can carry the largest military aircraft in the Chinese arsenal, uh, the early warning radar systems, deep water harbors, harbors that can accommodate U.S., rather Chinese Navy ships. It is that militarization that has the U.S. now considering a bolder military response. And when the Chinese military says to the American Poseidon, the crew up there, please go away quickly, what's the reaction from the crew inside that Poseidon uh, surveillance plane? Well, they recite, recite very calmly a script. They say that we see these as international waters, international airspace, and that the U.S. will continue peacefully. And I'll tell you, there was one instance there that when that American pilot delivered that message, I heard the frustration from the Chinese radio operator on the ground coming, coming back simply saying, go, go, go away. You can hear the anger there. It's hard to see how this temp tension doesn't escalate going forward. Jim Shudo with an exclusive report for us. Thanks very much. Uh, we're going to get reaction to that. That's coming.